Hey everyone, welcome to a very special edition of AE Live. We have the 2021 High Altitude Balloon Challenge Award Show tonight. How exciting. We want to get started with a really special guest to start us off. We have so much to cover in probably the next 60 to 90 minutes. I'm a person who talks a long time. I'm going to do my best to not talk as much tonight. Um, I want to bring on a special person, and that is Major General Felka. To start us off, we have so Major much General to Felka, cover how are you? Probably the next 60 and if to you're hearing an minutes, echo, hang on one I'm second. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Major General Felka, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Hey, um, I know that we had asked you and you were excited to join and say a few words to all the squadrons that took part in the, the major um, the major STEM program we have here. And uh, so let me just turn it over to you real quick. Well, thanks very much and good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to this very exciting awards event. It's a culmination of months of hard work for 139 squadrons from all eight regions across Civil Air Patrol. I know the aerospace education team at National Headquarters joins me in saying how proud I am of each cadet and adult leader who took part in this incredible STEM learning opportunity. I'd like to say thank you to each person who's been involved in this challenge as it certainly, it, it takes an army to get in new programs off the ground. Uh, special thanks though goes to the Indiana Wing for taking part in this high altitude balloon challenge by demonstrating to the cadets how the STEM education also carries over into the CAP operations arena. Conducting a full search and rescue exercise while training, uh, while tracking and recovering the balloon and the science experiments payloads truly brought our entire organization together. It crossed into all mission areas, all for the good of our cadets. It was truly a three mission exercise because it involved all the different types of operations assets, airplanes, small UAS, ground teams, and even communications assets for the benefits of cadets working on a unique aerospace education project. You all have my admiration for your great work. Thanks, Indiana Wing. <clears throat> Each participating squadron entered this new STEM challenge uh, for our cadets with a different perspective. Some just wanted something fun to do. Others needed something to challenge them. Uh, even some had a large group to divide and conquer the requirements of the challenge. Uh, others had a handful of cadets working intently on what they wanted to do. So no matter what your team of cadets took aim at in this challenge, the fact is you stepped up and you accepted the chance to work together as a team and learn a bit about some new areas of science in the process. Having Colonel Kittinger as the ambassador of this challenge brought a new and exciting dimension. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of joining Colonel Kittinger for dinner at the Florida Wing Conference a couple of years ago. What an amazing opportunity it was to share an evening with an aviation legend. Wow. Now each of you have been able to hear firsthand from Colonel Kittinger about how he and his teams worked together to achieve new knowledge about the effects of space on the human body. You've been able to learn from someone who studied each aspect of his missions before he embarked on them to ensure they were safe as they could be and that there was good science outcomes from the endeavors. In many of your documentary videos, it was evident that you not only learned a good bit about areas of science and technology, but also about the importance of teamwork, determination, respect for others' opinions, responsibility, and perseverance. I think many of you also learned that failure in your science experiments and failure is good when we learn from it. This reminds me of a famous Thomas Edison quote, I've not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. I'm excited to be able to welcome you here tonight and to congratulate you all on the hard work you have done. Each of you who participated are winners in my eyes just for having taken the leap of faith in yourselves to try something that you may not have tried before. Well done. All right, thank you very much, Major General Felka. Thank you so much for your support for aerospace education. And with that, we're gonna hang up on you. This is the, one of the few times I get to hang up on a Major General for, and we don't want you to hear you anymore. So, <laughs> so thank you so much right. for spending time with us tonight. My pleasure. Bye-bye. All right, um, that is our Civil Air Patrol, Major General Felka. I really appreciated him joining tonight. And um, so at this point now, I am actually going to be bringing in one of my compadres. Let's see, one second. All right, so we've got a black box above. And that black box means I need to contact somebody. So hang on one second. And all right, we're 
we're getting going. The power of the internet. <laughs> And there he is. Let me get his audio up and running. All right. Jason, how are you? Jason, are you muted? Oh, hang on. There we go. Jason, how are you? I'm doing all right. Can you hear me? I can hear you good. I had you muted on my side. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, I don't know what kind of award ceremony this is. <laughs> You don't have a tux on. I know, I know, I know. the the, uh, ma the major general was asking me. He's like, you know, hey, what should I what should I dress in my my official blues? I said, I don't even own an official blues, <laughs> so so I got to hey. get one of those. So I made everybody wear polos tonight. <laughs> well, you know what? We got one thing we can work on for next year. You know, that's uh, right. That's right. That'll be it. Hey, but, um. Hey. Glad to be here with you again. Yeah, man. It's always great to have you on. Hey, before we get started, Jason, I wanted to give a couple of special thanks as well. I know um, I know the, the Major General had some special thanks, but I want to give some special thanks as well. Um, the first, we have to say special thanks to Dr. Jeff Montgomery. He's our National Director of Aerospace Education. And without him, he's really the person that's behind the scenes who just gives us the okay to go do stuff. Um, and so this whole crazy idea of this project was brought to him and you know he had the, uh, the confidence in his team to say, yeah, let's go make that happen. Uh, and so none of this would have happened if it wasn't for Dr. Jeff Montgomery. So I wanna say a special thank you to him. Um, I also wanna say a special thank you to John Salvador, who is CAP's chief operating officer. He helped to make sure some of the logistics in the background happened again. He's not a name that you really heard in the forefront of any of our videos, but we couldn't do it if it wasn't for you, John. Thank you very, very much for, for all your effort for helping us out. And you know the Major General did mention Indiana Wing. I wanna call out four people in specific. Now, mind you, Jason, how many people do you think you had there? Maybe 20, 30? How many people do you think you had there? You know, it, it, it was probably, you know, there was people setting up all across. So we, we took over an entire school to give you scale, okay? We took over the football field. We took over multiple rooms inside of the school and everyone knew what they were doing and had a job. It gave me a lot of confidence that when there's a disaster somewhere in the world, well, somewhere in the United States, CAP is going to be there and take care of it. Um, I, I was blown away. I was just blown away. Yeah, half of me felt really bad um, that we didn't give these folks enough time. <laughs> we kind of we kind of came to them a little bit last minute. Um, we had to get some things approved by the Air Force, and we had to get some project planning stuff approved. And we went to Indiana with probably maybe about two weeks notice, which isn't that much for what we were asking them for. But at the same time, when there is a hurricane, when there is a natural disaster, you don't get a month to plan. Yeah. You, you, you know gotta, they don't give you a call when the hurricane's coming. That's right. You know, <laughs> so, so no you know, call. Yeah, so this was a little bit of a good practice for them to, to be able to quickly get a group together. Um, and we did, we had multiple airplanes, we had ground crews, we had drones, um, you know, UAS, SUAS. Toms. I tell you Toms. what, you know what? Let me tell you something, everybody there. We take advantage of our cell phones and the internet every day. Guess what? They did the entire thing. No internet, right. no phones in the field or on the planes. Yeah, because it blew me away. Yeah, because what's one away. of the first things that's going to go away if there's a natural disaster? Yep. You know, cell. all the cell towers, everyone's calling everybody. So you can't rely on them. So people will wonder, you know, if, so if you're a cadet and you wonder, why are we still using all these, what look like old radios and what, you know, cap airplanes have these radios and why are we doing all this? Because when there's a natural disaster, you know, and, and people need us, the cell phones and internet are going to be one of the first things that are probably going to go down. Um, and so that's our ability to be able to communicate with each other. So I do want to give out a special, a special shout out to a few folks. I want to give out a uh, Colonel Robert Freeze, who is the wing commander for Indiana. Um, I want to give out a special thanks to Lieutenant Colonel Jamie Griffith. Um, she was our mission commander during the launch. And so while all of you saw Jason and me up front, um, she was back running the team that was coordinating the ground crews, coordinating uh, the airplanes. She was somebody you didn't get a chance to see, um, you know, on the channel, but 
she was instrumental in helping to get everything together. And then uh, Captain uh, Michael McGregory, who was the director of operations for Indiana. And then I want to give out a really big shout out. He's got the lowest rank on here, Jason, um, but he, <laughs> he, he had an incredible uh, impact to us. And I know he's a, he's a very humble individual, so he's probably blushing right now. And that's First Lieutenant Michael Austin, uh, who really focused, um, who helped to coordinate, even with the, the, uh, the higher ups. Um, he was kind of our voice with them initially, uh, making sure we had all the right people to talk to. Uh, and I know he was one of your go-to people there on site. So, do you have anything, anything to say about Michael? You know, he, uh, you know, we should make another box right here for <laughs> Mike. Um, you know, we had him on the phone. Now, um, he went down, um, and, and he was kind of a, a backup chase team for us and he was on the ground and, um, due to, you know, a lot of sign offs and things, we could not put, um, cab communications and stuff on the show, but Mike was down there, you know, not a part of the official operations, um, on that side, he was, he was kind of part of the education side. He was able to give us that live feed a little bit in the field, um, mm -hmm. and and you know he's instructor there, unbelievable aerospace type school, and he you know Cap took over the whole place. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. So yeah, Mike Austin, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, man, we really appreciate you. Um, all right, so with that, let's just jump into the awards ceremony. So, folks, here's how it's going to work. We had several categories. We're gonna go through each of the categories and we're gonna go through first the nominees and then we're gonna announce the winners. Um, now, some of the things you're gonna notice is you're gonna notice that we have the, the award winners are winning a grant. There's a certain amount of money that each of the award winners got. Now, I'm very excited to say that National stepped up their game even again. Um, they, you know, they, they took the amounts that we all told you were up for winning and they've increased those amounts, I think just about across the board. And we even added one category because somebody came in with something that was really cool and we felt that they really needed to be uh, highlighted. Um, and so, so we, we're gonna go through all that. Now, how did we come up with you know, the winners, right? So in case you're wondering. So what happened is Jason and I, we reached our, we threw all the names into a bucket and we randomly, no, I'm kidding. We didn't randomly pull out a name. Um, what we did is we went through all of your projects it's all we did for days and days and days. Our children and wives want to know where we are. <laughs> so it's all we did. Um, deep, deep, deep dive. Can, deep I, dive. Can, I, can I share with you a few little uh, go for it. tidbits? Yeah, all go right. for it. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, many of you, first of all, if you're joining this or you're checking this out after the show has aired, what we did is on uh, uh, August 24th, um, we launched projects from uh, civil air patrol squadrons across the United States, 46 states in Puerto Rico, sent projects to Indiana. We launched them on two high altitude balloons. Uh, and we had chase teams in the air and on the ground. One, you know, I think one went to 89,000 feet and the other one blew my mind, went to 103,000 feet, right? It was, it was crazy. I lost a bet. We still got to figure that out. I got my quarter over here. Uh, <laughs> Captain Bob got me on that one. Um, so let me share a few items here and really you guys blew my mind. Um, I, I looked at every slide that you guys submitted and I, I, I know all these random facts now. Okay. So we sent up a whole bunch of different kinds of x-ray film, uh, traditional film, and even, uh, I think you say it dosimeters used by people at x-ray and dental offices to detect radiation and guess what for the most part they did but we discovered something else okay unknown since you sent a control and a flight sample in the same box some of the projects came back with radiation on the control and the, the cadets figured it out the u.s mail uh service had x-rayed their box that is unexpected okay multiple kinds of seeds. Uh, one that I'd like to highlight, it was amazing. Uh, the pizza team sent wheat, tomatoes, oregano seeds, <laughs> and a packet of Parmesan cheese. And, and 
unfortunately we didn't have enough time but they they were growing these plants and they could harvest it and make pizza that went to space it was unbelievable uh, on the medical side we flew insulin uh, we flew uh, urine dipsticks to that would identify and, and help you understand diabetes. Um, we sh flew a sh uh, sheep's eye that uh, they could look at the pressure change and everything from um, the upper atmosphere. Uh, unbelievable. A chicken bone. We did fly a few things from humans. Okay, you ready for this, Captain Bob? Toenails. Hey, I'm I like I like aviation. I like flight. I'm more engineering. I'm not the, the the wet side, the biology and all that stuff. We flew human teeth. Oh, in, in multiple capsules. Now, um, they were looking at radiation. They were looking at the pressure. They were looking at all these things and they can they they created contraptions in order to crush the teeth and see how much force it took. Unbelievable. Uh, we flew human hair. And I tell you, we got a problem. Hair dye cannot handle the UV of the upper atmosphere. Uh -oh. We had the change in hair color because uh, of the UV rays. Uh, you know, we flew soil. We, I wish I had the entire hour to talk about all the different projects. You guys blew me away. And you know what? I know out of all these projects and everyone we had here, there's future astronauts that could walk on the moon and Mars right. here. We have future military and commercial pilots on this call right now. All right. We have future, you know, aviation builders of spaceships or planes that'll get us anywhere we want in an hour. In my lifetime, in your lifetime, Bob. That's right. It is unbelievable the capability. Okay. But I, th there's there's one other thing I got to say, and I know we got to move on. Yep. And, and I, you're going to cut my mic. I know you are. You're going to cut my hey, mic. Hey, everybody, watch how this works. Ready? <laughs> all right now you and i talked about this offline a lot and something that was super frustrating with this project okay and i think every teacher knows what i'm going to say right now there were unbelievable slides unbelievable videos unbelievable uh um documentaries and, and videos we you, you guys did not follow all the directions okay and there were some that were unbelievable that, but they didn't include one of the aspects that we asked for for example mission patch maybe you forgot the year you know uh you know in your video maybe you included uh you know a, a song now bob almost got his channel shut down because <laughs> right. somebody had hey, two of them song <laughs> okay so here, here's here's all I have to say about this, and then we'll move on to the the money, which you guys are all here for. <laughs> um, this not following directions cost you guys hundreds to thousands of dollars. Now you 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 can do your homework and not follow directions, and you, you know like oh, I I got a B minus, and you just move on. But literally today, you miss national airtime, you miss <laughs> thousands of dollars possibly. And, and you know what, this is a chance that you guys are in aviation and aerospace and directions, the smallest things matter. If we had more time, Colonel Joe could tell us some people on his team didn't follow directions and he almost died multiple times because they did something wrong, put a valve in backwards. Okay. So aerospace, we're called to a higher level of execution and excellence. Okay. So Take it to the bank because next time you can make thousands of dollars by following directions. Hopefully we do it again and you make Bob, Susan, and everyone who's involved jobs even harder because we have to include everyone's project in the final, final round. Yeah, thank you for that. So let me just jump in real quick. So, so the way, just kind of going back to before, so the way that we did this was Jason and I, we dove in. And we looked at everything. We looked at your patches. We looked at your your science projects. We looked at your slides, your videos, um, and and a lot of you had just some really incredible stuff. And then what we had the hard job of doing is we had the hard job of paring that down to a smaller number. And then that was say the semifinals, right? And now we sent that up to the national team because we didn't want Jason and I to choose the winner. We we're too we we're too invested. 
we had seen it too much. We wanted fresh eyes and another group of folks to be able to see it for themselves and provide their input. And so the national team, we had several, a lot of folks from the national team got together and they reviewed our top, our top selections, our semifinalists. And they're the ones that, that chose the winners. Um, so if you don't agree, don't complain to them. Don't complain to me. No, I'm kidding. So, so, um, so with that, Jason, let's jump right into it. Um, let's do it. All right. So hand-drawn patch nominees. Now, before we jump right, so Jason, what did you look for when you were looking for your hand-drawn patch nominees? Right. Uh, you know, I don't have the list right in front of me, but the big ones were, did you put your squadron at least number? It doesn't have to be name, but number. Did you have the year, which is important? Our mission number, just like SpaceX or NASA was Stratostar 0436. And then I wanted something related to your project. Uh, a lot of a lot of you gave really cool squadron logos or something like that. But I, you know, if, if you look at NASA and everybody else, they have some aspect of their science or, or purpose in that patch. Cool. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to go through everybody's uh, all the nominees in detail. We just we wouldn't have enough time with how many how many we have to get through. Um, we're going to go through the top three. So num now these aren't in any specific order. So if you look at these, don't think to yourself, oh, I know who's going to win. You don't know. I mixed them all up when I was making the slides. So, so our top three nominees are Washington Squadron 15, Bellingham Composite Squadron. We have the Kentucky 058 Frankfurt Composite Squadron. I really like this one. Um, and we have the Johnny Kramer Composite Squadron in California 214. I thought that was cool. I'm assuming that's the Golden Gate Bridge. I love that somebody could draw cadets like that with the airplanes in the background. Is this it, the one that had the tooth? Um, you know, you you know, know what that is? That's oh, is that space bread? bread. Oh, it's bread. That's space bread. Yes. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. All right. So, they they yeah, flew bread. So there really you go. Cool. That's a very cool one. All right. Are you ready? I don't have like a little I'm drum ready. roll machine. Like we go. <laughs> and the winner of the hand drawn patch nominee is Johnny Kramer Composite yes. Squadron. So nice. They did a fantastic job. Now their commander is First Lieutenant Michael Gross and their AEO is Captain Luis uh, Mateos. And um, hey, you know, this was a $150 award and they're now $200. Uh, so congratulations to the Johnny Kramer Composite Squadron. All right, moving on. Next we have the digital. Now we, we, we wanted to have two different groups here. We wanted a hand-drawn and we wanted a digital. Um, what's your thoughts on the digital patch? You know, uh, so uh, let me let me say this. We did get a lot more hand drawn patches. Okay, it makes sense. You know, you you have you have paper, pencil, mm -hmm. colored. You know, you you get you have that around. Um, digital patch. That's next level. That's you know that's professional. Getting into professional level um, in, in the tools and everything that you use for graphics. Uh, and so it's exciting. It's exciting to see, you know, the kids of today, you know, getting into the professional tools. Yeah. So we have here, we have um, Virginia 94, Hanover Composite Squadron. I see some tomatoes there in the background. It looks like they were going to grow something. So that's very cool. All right. We have, uh, I, I'm, I'm in love with this one. I got to tell you, um, this one and the next one. Um, I fell in love with these two. Uh, we have Florida 447, Clearwater Composite Squadron. And then we have, I mean, I just like the minimalistic view. I mean, it just looks great. It's, it's highly it's polished. Cool. Yeah, highly polished. Um, whoever made this patch, if you're looking for a non-paying, <laughs> non-paying internship with Captain Bob over AE Live, let me know. I need, <laughs> I need help building graphics. Um, you obviously you know, know what you're doing. You know, they did. I think, uh, you know, I'd have to check my notes, but they definitely flew a. Uh, some kind of pepper yeah hot chili pepper um, in their in their project i remember seeing that yeah yeah very cool and then not to be outdone we've got cunningham field composite squadron north carolina 160 just above me here in south carolina very nice. very cool they reused our um our stratostar um, balloon there yeah. very cool i like the night shot of uh 
of the United States. Very cool. Yeah, you know, it's um, finding a balloon at night would be much more challenging. You could put some strobes on it or something like that. But I think it'd be really cool. Have you ever flown a high altitude balloon at night? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what you put some strobes on it, obviously, you follow all the FAA rules. And I actually like to launch it in, in you know, what would be the early morning, three, two in the morning. So it's flying in the night. And then while it's up there, uh, if you want, you get to see the sunrise. That's so it cool. Is, it is one of the coolest things that I've ever recorded. Uh, yeah, climbing into the sunrise. That is really sweet. Amazing. All right. Well, that's our three nominees. Are we ready? All right. I'm next ready. year, I got to get a drum roll. <laughs> the winner is... Florida 447 Clearwater right. Composite Squadron. Uh, we've got Commander Lieutenant Colonel uh, San Pedro, and the AEO, AEO is also Lieutenant Colonel Diane Zaman. Um, fantastic job to all of you there. Um, I'm not kidding when I say I need somebody to help me with, with <laughs> graphics. Um, have this cadet who made this contact me. I love it. Um, you guys are going to win the $200. Again, we upped it from $150 to $200. Thank you, National. You're going to hear me say thank you national quite a bit when it comes to these um so very cool all right so our next one is the creative science now what was the difference jason between creative science and innovative science because we have two different award uh, categories well so I, I think the big part of this uh this award category was uh kind of the artistic value of this slide right is is telling us the science telling the story so that um, you know the message comes across, right? So just think about this. If you're walking around in a engineering or a science conference and you see and you see this poster from far away, right? You see space, you see a box, you see plants, you see a wolf. All right, I'm coming over here. I'm coming mm -hmm. over and I'm gonna ask those cadets, hey, What's going on here? You know, what, what are you what are you guys up to? It's beautifully done, uh, matching colors. You really highlight the cap logo there. Um, you know, so uh, you know, there's there's uh, it. That's that's really what it is. Is drawing us in artistically so that we can uh, enjoy and understand the science. That humans were all about. Um, you know, it's not all form or function, right? You got to meet somewhere in the middle. And we like looking at beautiful things. Yeah, and I'll actually, works. I'll hold you off on the innovative. We'll wait till we actually get the innovative slides and we'll, we'll explain that one more. But yeah, cool. but like you said, I mean, you could have a really cool science experiment, but if nobody knows about it, does it matter? Yeah, um, if you just put it on a white poster yeah. and no graphs, no pictures, you know, and, and, and no, you know, graphics or logos or anything, you know, people are gonna walk by. Right. It's not interesting, you know? Um, and so unfortunately, you know, as humans, you do need to take your, your awesome science and the things that you do, present it in a human, you know, readable fashion, put a little bit of effort into it. If you don't, if you're, if you don't feel like you're good at the graphics, do what Captain Bob does. Call somebody in. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm just kidding guys. He put all this together. I'm it's not amazing. kidding. But, 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 uh, Call me. Yeah, get, get Call a friend me. to help you out. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, and also th something else I wanted to point out real quick. And so we can stay on schedule here is you'll notice now this is Washington's Washington 15's uh, the Wolfpack's second entry. One of the things I thought was really cool um, with all the entrants that we've got is we have some units. They did really, really good in one thing, right? Like that was like their claim to fame. And then we have other units that they were just rocking it. On uh, like so many yes. levels. Um, so like here, we're only in you now that for the, the patches, if you had, you know, a, a hand drawn, we didn't judge you on a digital vice versa. If you had digital, we Correct. didn't judge you on a hand drawn. So really, so far, we've only had this is our really our second um, topic and Wolfpack has been in both of them. So uh, congratulations, Bellingham composite squadron. And, and you know what they did, Bob, what they do, they followed directions. That's true. Okay, they did. They put GMO, non-GMO right on their uh, patch and they put it right in. I love it. All right, yep. so that's Bellingham Composite Squadron. That's our first nominee for Creative Science. And our second nominee, um, Texas, Unit 7, Lackland Composite Squadron. Nice job there. That's beautiful. I like this. You know, I'm from Indianapolis, so it looks like a Colts, the Colts <laughs> poster, I guess. 
Yeah, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, and this is now one of the first <laughs> times in about 20 years I can be excited and be proud to say I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. <laughs> there you um, go. I'm also a Clemson fan, so we're having some trouble there. But anyways, um, <laughs> and then our third nominee is Washington 68, the North Shore Composite Squadron. This looks beautiful, beautiful with the colors yeah, yeah, in the background. They match. I love and they the got green. a great hand-drawn patch there. Uh, you know, old-school computer monitor, balloon, yep. earth. Love the Aurora. If you're under 25 years old, do you even know what a CRT monitor looks like? I mean, do they have to look in a history book to see what that was? <laughs> I think I think they do. It's at the Technology Museum right <laughs> next to, uh, you know, the Edison light bulb in a typewriter. I know sometimes the CAP in any organization, you know, we, we have a hard time getting the latest and greatest computers because they're expensive. I'm pretty sure even CAP is not using CRT monitors anymore, but you never know, I guess. <laughs> All right, never so know. with that, here we go, our virtual drum roll. And our winner is but nice Bellingham Composite Squadron, the, the Wolf Pack. Um, again, you you are the winner of a three hundred dollar grant. Congratulations! Um, uh, the commander there is Major Aaron Clausen. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. You know, I used to be a DJ when I was in college, and I always get so worried at weddings, like I'm pronouncing somebody's name wrong. And then the AEO is First Lieutenant Terry Reed and senior member Ted Radke. Um, awesome job, folks. Nice job. Um, let's move on. All right, so that's the creative science. Now, documentary videos. I'm a video guy, right? So this is kind of was, was the thing that I was kind of really interested in seeing. Um, as Jason mentioned, um, you had to be careful. I, I had a couple of squadrons put some music in there that they weren't, they shouldn't have put in there. Um, so all of you, not all of you, but a lot of you put in music you should have put in royalty free, or you had right. access through a service, um, so you could put it in. Perfect. Um, if you put in Beyonce, not good. <laughs> Can't use it. Um, so, so, but there's a couple of right now though. These three squadrons. Everybody else so far, we've announced the squadrons when we showed their content. And there's a reason why we haven't done that here. But first, I'm going to who the nominees are. So the nominees are Arizona 210, Sholo Composite, Maryland 879, Granite Cadet Squadron, and Delaware 20, North Chesapeake Cadet Squadron. Now, Jason, and, and, uh, yeah, you know, Captain Bob, I, uh, I loved watching all these. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that that this allowed and what we hoped that we would see is is kind of the the process that they went through and and literally you could watch a video and see curiosity being unlocked right they were asking questions that google doesn't know right what happens when you take a whole bunch of seeds send them to space and grow it and make pizza google right. doesn't know that <laughs> right 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 google doesn't know if insulin will work in space all right and we could see that in real time and you guys did a great job of displaying it. it was awesome now like i had mentioned before we're going to be saying a couple times thank you to national because they, they they stepped up with the even promised folks in the beginning and this is why we're showing all three of these these teams here at the same time national now i didn't know they were going to do this until they did it so i was super happy when they when they told me about it what they went ahead and did is you have one overall winner and both of the you have two honorable mentions so if your name is on this list, you're going to be a winner. So here's what you're gonna win. All right. First of all, congratulations to Maryland 879, Granite Cadet Squadron. Good job. You're gonna get you a grant. You, you, you definitely need uh, the crowd, uh, a couple of different crowd <laughs> know, noises. Because, uh, you know, until COVID's over, we can't have the big studio that you dreamed of with the oh, live I know. audience. Live audience. So, so let's, let's, let's have that crowd background <laughs> and, and the drum roll, all right, next year. I agree, I agree. Hopefully next year we'll have the big studio audience. We'll do it live. There you um, go. All right, so our first honorable mention and grant winner of $250, congratulations again, the Granite Connect Squadron. You get an honorable mention for great teamwork and clarity of your video. Um, the video work that you did was very concise. 
it was very again they say clarity over and over again but it was very clear i mean you can just tell by watching the screen here they really outlined they used video pictures text they did a really fantastic job of, of putting this video together and and i know personally how much work it takes to do something like that so really great job uh the commander for granite cadet squadron is commander lieutenant colonel brenda reed and congratulations also to the AEO, Second Lieutenant Jennifer Bond. Um, all right, so that is our first honorable mention. Our second honorable mention, and honestly, one of my personal favorites because of this scene right here. Now, <laughs> if you are friends with these cadets, please pick on them. We're not supposed to say pick on people, you know, but pick on them in a good, fun way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know why you should pick on them in a good, fun way? Because they just got your squadron 250 bucks. <laughs> That's why you should pick on them in a fun way. Um, it, they they were was, very it creative. Was, it, it was a joy to watch. It really um, was. They kept us entertained. Um, you know, I don't know if you show it in this little clip, but they actually went to a university and mm -hmm. talked to scientists and you know, ask them about some of the projects they were going to fly. Give them some insight and how they should analyze the data when they get back. Um, they really there you told, go right there. Here we go. Yep. There's the professor, and uh, really told the whole story. And that that's what we that's what we're looking for. Like we like Spider Man, we like Batman, we like all the Marvel stuff. But right. guess what? You can do the same thing with science, and that's what these guys did. They entertained us, right? And they they showed us. They told us the story, and at right. the end of the day. We like stories as humans. I loved it. And, 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 and Captain Bob, yeah. you know, I know we haven't figured it out yet. We have so many videos and slides and everything. I hope we can post everything so everyone can see it. Um, it'll break the internet. We know it will. So <laughs> we got to figure that out uh, moving forward. So you'll get an email probably from Susan at headquarters uh, once we, we figure out how to do that. Right. And that was the other reason why we had to make sure that folks didn't have music, um, copyrighted music, because we can't we can't share it. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, team, really good job here from Sholo um, and, and the commander and AEO for Arizona 210, Lieutenant Colonel Carol Schubschlager. I hope I said that right, Carol. Um, all right. And the winner is da -da -da -da, Delaware 20 North Chesapeake Cadet Squadron. Uh, Commander Captain picture. Sean Mann. What, yeah. what a thumbnail. What a beautiful thumbnail. And, and AEO, that's teamwork right there. Uh, yeah, that's right. And AEO First Lieutenant Krista Moretz. Um, they did a fan, just, you know, they, from a documentary perspective, just, they were, they were on it. What, what were your Look thoughts? At Look at that. It shows what was in there. Lego guys, seeds, foam, x-ray, M&Ms. And then they used the, the, the capsule like a microphone. It was amazing. <laughs> That, yeah, that was really funny. At first, it took me for a second, but I didn't realize they were doing that. I'm like, what is she holding in her hand? I'm like, oh, that's a capsule. <laughs> um, so congratulations to North Chesapeake Cadet Squadron. You all did a fantastic job and you are the winners of our documentary video, $500. Nice job. All right, now, product of distinction. I am going to, we didn't even have this as a category, right? So- We had to make- yeah, Jason, this, go for this, it. This squadron, uh, you know, they ended up making a new new category that we actually, if we do this again next year, it will become an entire category to compete in. So they were the first ones this year. Uh, so I'm going through the slides and I see this slide. It's hard to see here. We, you know, we couldn't make it bigger, but I see a graph on the bottom of the slide. And I said, wait a minute, you know, I thought I collected all the data on this flight. I know every sensor inside and out. I know what the graph should look like. I've never seen a graph like this before started getting into the slide, I realized that they had created custom electronics inside their capsule and they collected their own data during the flight. They analyzed the data, they put a graph here. Uh, it, was, it was unbelievable uh, just to, to, to think of that, right? So they had a little switch on the top and they sent us a control capsule as well. And so I, I remember a team flipping switches. I was like, what's going on over there? I don't know, you know, I'm working on the balloon. I got Captain Bob in my ear, live feed. And all of a sudden data shows up here. So um, we, we were on a call with Susan and at headquarters and, and I was telling her about this and she said, you know what? Um, we're gonna make this project a distinction. And, and so here, here it is, okay? Now we're hopefully more than a, you know less than a year out from the next project, 
Um, I have a link and, and I'll see if I can get it in the chat here um, to the, the information about this project, the code, the parts that they used. So cadets, if you would like to compete in the engineering category for next year, which is gonna require some electronics, start looking at Arduino code, uh, looking at um, coding in Pi. You're, you're an engineer there, Bob, aren't you? That's you right. do IT stuff and code? Yeah, I have my, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the bottom there. Actually, it's off at the moment, but um, I have a map that has uh, live METAR data that comes in through um, through a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, there you go. So, so I would focus on the Arduinos, really small boards that can fit in your capsules. You probably have your capsules. You have the dimensions. So that's something next year. And uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll let you take it to here and, and give them the official announcement, even though we put the slide up. I'll, I'll give you the drum roll. <laughs> All right, Arizona 334, congratulations. You won an award that didn't even exist. <laughs> so that takes, For your whole, innovation. that takes a whole For your special innovation. skill. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, so uh, Captain Michael Griffith, um, who is uh, the, the commander and also the assistant AEO, I think that's what the A stands for there. Um, you know, congratulations on that. And, um, you know, this, this was an unexpected, really, really cool thing that we saw. So nice job. All right. So Jason, we've got one more before we go to the Kittinger Cup. Now, amazingly, we're, we're on schedule. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, oh no. I know. And how is that possible? Uh, usually you and I just talk and talk. So, <laughs> all right, innovative science. Um, what, what was your thoughts here around innovative science? Now, as much as I was really kind of digging into a lot of the video stuff, you were really excited and interested on the innovative science stuff. Uh, what really got you excited here? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, and we're going to get a chance to talk to Cap, uh, Colonel Joe here in a little bit. Um, and, and, it, and for those of you who don't know, Colonel Joe um, was asked basically by the Air Force, and then it was actually part of NASA, to determine if humans could survive in space, okay? The, the, the space program is very young. So what he did is he just, he built a tin, you know, uh, capsule simulating what would go on top of a rocket. And uh, he launched it on high altitude balloons. And at first it was filled with mice and guinea pigs and they had radiation plates. Fascinating story, right? It was the equivalent of one Colonel Joe of mice and hamsters uh, that went up and they came back and they survived. Okay. But he had to step in that capsule and we call it, we, we do at least in our community and at large, the first man in space. He stepped inside the capsule with a, uh, a flight suit for an aircraft and he launched himself above 99% of the atmosphere in full radiation of outer space and he survived. Okay. Um, and you're going to get to hear from him in a minute. And one of the things at the beginning of our uh, national competition here said, you know, I care about the science. I care about these kids understanding the science and pushing us forward. He talked about um, having humanity to leave the earth. He talked about, you know, you know, looking for uh, ways to cure diseases. And you know what? One of the things about this, like I, I, I complain about biology, but guess what? It was a biological experiment. He had a flight surgeon. He had all kinds of tests being done on him to make sure that humans could fly in space. And um, in, in his book, and, and what we've heard him say is some of the Mercury Gemini astronauts actually, you know, would, would uh, thank Colonel Joe for going up first. And um, when he asked them if they would go up in a balloon, he says, no, they would never go up in the balloon. It was too scary. Uh, so anyways, the, the science category for me was in the essence of, of Colonel Joe. Is, is making sure that we execute well on the science and, and the innovative ideas, just like Colonel Joe thought outside the box to come up with a solution to, to test humans in space. So that's, that's you know, the essence of what we're looking for um, in these top, this is the top science category here. Um, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll let you take it from here, Bob, um, but because I, I could talk all day, all night about this, if you let me, you don't come. We don't have mic. time tonight, Jason. We're uh, on schedule. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, you know, I, I echo everything you said. Um, so when it comes down to it, it is the science that's important. Um, you know, and the other thing I really liked, and I, I don't know that they were the teams that were nominees or the winner, um, but I really did enjoy seeing the, sci the innovative science projects that didn't meet their hypothesis. They made yes. a hypothesis and they ran the experiment and they didn't get what they expected to see. Um, I often think you can learn a lot more from that uh, because otherwise you get, you get, um, you know, it's called confirmation bias, right? Yes. So you have a project, you have um, a, a hypothesis and you go and you do the experiment and it tells you exactly what you wanted to see. Well, exactly. is it really telling you what you should be seeing or are you just confirming your own bias because it was your experiment? Um, so being able yep. to say, Hey, we did something and we didn't get the answer back. That's not a failure. That's awesome. Yeah. You get, so. you get, and, and you get more data that you can then put into your slide and your project and someone can stand on your shoulders, take to the next level. Um, you know, unfortunately in school, we, we, we say you didn't do well in the test. You get an F you're, you know, it's a, it's a failure, right? right. Science is, um, looking at the mysteries either personally or that the world has or that we don't know looking into the unknowns and we we have to have a question of what are we looking for and that's kind of your hypothesis and then we go into the unknown all right and we 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 get we get data whether we, our guess was right or wrong there's data and we can move on to the next set of experiments and, and I think that's very insightful that, uh, you know, if, if you didn't get the answer you were looking for, we have more data and, and it moves humanity forward. Yeah, I had, a, we'll, have to, we'll jump into our nominees here, just 10 seconds. But one thing I just wanted to add, I got into um, a heavy discussion with a director at work one time because he, he said on a call, he goes, failure is not an option. And I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't help myself. I got in trouble. I said, I apologize, sir, but, Failure is always a positive outcome. Um, and he didn't like that, but it's all right. Uh, and, and you know what? That's how we learn. Look, that's right. you get on a bike, you fall off, you learn, you know, how to do it better. That's right. it, it is, it, it's human nature. And, you know, this isn't, you know, the, the show for it, but right, right. <laughs> what Civil Air Patrol is bringing to education, this kind of work uh, that Stratostar and Civil Air Patrol put together is is allowing there to be room to work there there aren't any right or wrong answers there's just information and we move forward together right right and um this is how it is it, you know we got to have school and we got to have cap and and stratostar and it all works together and we get to mars the moon yep. we have you know supersonic jets it's going to be incredible all right. Well, last comment on this, because otherwise we're going to run out of time is, <laughs> you know, feel free to fail and success is built on the back of failures. Um, so, all right. Enough go. of that, Jason. Otherwise, this is going to turn into a podcast in the last three hours. All right. So with that, the nominees <laughs> for the Innovative Science Award, um, Maryland 879 Granite Cadet Squadron. It seems like I've heard them before. Um, the Tooth Fairy Goodies in Space was one of their projects. They had several. Uh, very nice job. Um, let's see, going to the next one. We have Virginia 130, Burke Composite Squadron. Um, their top slide, again, they had multiple uh, in their capsule, adhesives in space. This one was really and, cool. And, you know, look at the detail. Now, you know, on the show here, we can't zoom in, but right. they took full advantage of all the space on the slide, uh, providing graphs, diagrams. Um, you know, uh, it was incredible. Yeah, I like the break. It's, it's hard to see probably online. This will be recorded in HD, so hopefully you guys can kind of make it bigger yourselves. But uh, yeah, even their, their results, they did a breakdown of the raw data. So that was really cool. Um, and our third nominee, uh, I got a little nervous. I got to admit when I saw the toilet, I was like, where's this going? Uh, Colorado <laughs> Military Academy <laughs> Cadet Squadron. Um, uh, let's see here. So these were your three nominees. All right, before I switch it over, because I'm usually barreling through and I show the winner before we do it. All right, so we got our drum roll. All right, Innovative Science Award winner is, and Florida, get ready. I'm going to call you in a second. I'm going to call you. All right, the winner is Burke Composite Squadron, Virginia nice 130. Job. 
Yeah. Now, now I know we, we don't have a lot of time, but let me yeah. tell you a little bit about this and why it's so exciting. Uh, and I, I honestly didn't even know this kind of thing was possible. They use four different types of adhesives and they glued, I think, pieces of wood together, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the capsule, not impressive, right. okay? It showed up, little pieces of wood. I'm like, come on, guys, you can do better, right? They went home and they built this pulling contraption. It's hard to see. Um, and they pulled apart the glue and the piece of wood to see how much maybe Newton's or how much force it took to break, break the glue, okay? This is vital for when we go to space, okay? Um, we need glue, right? Uh, what happens to it when you send it through a vacuum? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know what happens when you send Gorilla Glue to space, right? right? They literally tested that, and, and this kind of data could be insightful to how we could live, survive, moon, Mars, um, outside the atmosphere. Very practically applicable um immediately yep absolutely all right so congratulations again we're going to say thank you to national uh they increased the award um the grant for this winner um so commander captain sarah demjanovic um and aeo second lieutenant john douglas uh congratulations you will have a grant for six hundred dollars coming your way and I'd also like to hear from you, um, Captain Sarah Demjanovic, if you have a sister or a family member named Julie, because Demjanovic is a pretty, I don't know, it's, it's a unique name. And I have, a, I have somebody I know really well that's named Julie Demjanovic. So that's how I can know how to say your last name. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'd be interested to see if you're related. Um, so all right, so Jason, here's what we're gonna do. I am going to hang up with you, okay? Okay. So I am gonna go connect and call in about 20 seconds. I'm gonna call Florida. And we're gonna- Do you want me to stick around on the meeting I here want you and, to stick and, around the meeting because I'm gonna okay. come back to you. And we're gonna go over, we're gonna talk to Colonel Joe and we're gonna talk to Susan down in Florida. All and right, then, hey, nice knowing you. Hopefully <laughs> uh, you bring me back on the show. After, after, after they are done, um, we're gonna do some conversations with Colonel Joe. And then we, after that, I'm going to hang up with Florida. I'm going to come back to you. And then okay. Okay. Um, we are going to go over the nominees for the Kittinger Cup. Now, All right. you, good. unfortunately, I'm going to hang up on you, though, when we I'll get ready watch. to announce hey. the winner, because Colonel Joe is going to announce the winner. I, I'm going to watch on the live feed, just like there everyone else. And if you're out there on the live feed, normally I try my best to be able to have a screen up on the side where I'm answering questions and I'm interacting with everybody. At the very end, I'm gonna to try to look at some of your questions. Now, Jason's gonna do us a favor, cause I just, I can't, I'm doing this kind of by myself uh, here locally. So I, I can't look at the, your questions right now. But Jason is going to take his time uh, while we're talking to Colonel Joe and Susan, and he's gonna to try to answer some of your questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post them. And Jason's gonna be nice enough to try to answer your questions. All right. All right, Jason, I'm going to hang up on you, man. I'll call to you in a few minutes. All right. See ya. Bye. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to mute myself. So everybody take about a 10 second break. We'll be right back. I'm going to go get uh, Florida on the line. All right, and there we go. Susan, Colonel Joe, how are you? We're good. We don't see you yet, but we assume we're on. Um, you are on. Um, let's see here. 
video settings. You should see me. Um, I see that I'm sending over to you. So you guys should see me. Um, but even okay. if you don't, you're on. we won't hold up time trying to do that as long as Colonel Kittinger can be seen. That's great. Um, all right. So I had, uh, before, we have a special presentation, but before we get to that, um, Colonel Joe, I had, a, I had an important question for you. Um, I wanted to ask you what you felt the importance of STEM education is for our future. Well, the CAP Aerospace Program is dedicated to the education of our youth. They are the future leaders of our country. And I, I subscribe to any, any program that encourages students to do their best and to, and to go into aerospace and, and engineering. And the STEM program and this program that Susan dreamed up for this wonderful program uh, is a contribution to our country. And we're very much indebted to you for that, Susan. Uh, it, it's been an exciting program. And uh, everyone, you know, 100, 139 squadrons uh, uh, is a fantastic accomplishment with what they've done. And I'm looking forward to future years because I know it's going to get better every year. We have a great team assembled. They did a great job. And uh, we, we, we have a great start to a great program that benefit our country. All right, fantastic. Um, let's see here. I think that we're good. Um, I see Michael Phelps tried calling me again. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. I just want to make sure that we're good here. Um, can Susan, can you ask the team there if, if we are good? It looks like you're good on my side, um, but they're trying to get a hold of me. So as long as you can see Colonel Kittinger, we are fine. We won't try to call and see you. We want to make sure he can be seen and we'll move on with the program. Okay, can you see? Yes, I can see you guys perfectly fine. We're going to stop trying to troubleshoot here. And we're going to move along. All right. Sounds great to me. All right. Fantastic. All right. Now, Susan, um, I think you had a presentation for Colonel Joe. I do, but I need to say a few things before I do that. First of all, this has been a team effort from a lot of people, not just at our headquarters, but across the nation. We've had wing commanders, wing directors of aerospace education involved, as well as squadron commanders their AEOs, and many of their teams that have been working throughout the last four months on this program, or longer. But it's been a wonderful team project throughout Civil Air Patrol. Dr. Montgomery wanted a national aerospace education STEM challenge for our cadets across the nation. And luckily, I had met Jason Kruger at some educator conferences, and this just happened to be the program that we selected to, to do for this year, and it turned out great. And I'll just have to say this, Jason, you've been a wonderful person to work with throughout this program. And uh, Jason and I have been paid throughout this. I get a paycheck, Jason gets a paycheck. But Bob, the long pole in the tent here has been you. Captain Bob Roberts, our South Carolina Wing Director of Aerospace Education, has been phenomenal in making sure everything works, and he's just a treasure. So Bob, I wish that you would pick up what I sent in the mail to you and show it to everyone now. And it says, congratulations to Captain Bob Roberts, the project director of the first Civil Air Patrol National High Altitude Balloon Challenge for cadets. So show that for them, please. So you can show that next time that you're doing a program, you can have that in the background and it can be seen in, in your program. So. Thank you, Bob, for all you have done. We have to tell you thank you first. Thank you, Susan. I greatly appreciate it. So now for the person that we could not have done this without. Colonel Joe Kittinger is a very good friend of mine, as well as my friends here in, in Florida. And we're all gathered here at Smith Preparatory Academy in uh, Altamont Springs, Florida. And with us is Barbara Walters Phillips, former National CAP uh, ACE Teacher of the Year, um, AFA National Teacher of the Year, and, and a good CAP uh, ambassador for our aerospace education program, along with her husband, Mr. Pat Phillips. And uh, we're at Smith Preparatory Academy with uh, Headmaster Michael Phillips and his technological person here today is Bruce. And Bruce, I don't know your last name, but thank you, Bruce. We're glad you're here. <laughs> so thanks to that team. But 
I, I called Colonel Kittinger one day and asked if he would consider being the ambassador for this program because of all the things that he's done in the past and what a great mentor he could be to our cadets. He readily agreed because one of the things that Colonel Kittinger wants to do until his very last day on this earth with all of us is to inspire young people to continue learning, to continue striving to better themselves, to continue learning about history because those are the things that we learn from that propel us forward and to continue trying to work on, on figuring out what they're going to do for the future. So he felt like this was a prime opportunity to promote that. And he said, I will do something even better. I will pro uh, provide for you a $5,000 grant for the squadron that does the best science experiment because he thinks this science is the most important part of this project. The good part about this is, sir, all the videos that you did not see, we're going to put them on our website, our top videos, and those videos all talk about, yes, their science experiments, but they also talked about, one, what they would do with this $5,000, and they had some <laughs> very creative and very humanitarian type um, reasons, I mean, uh, ideas that they had for their money. But the thing that was most important to us, I think, was that they things they learned from you. They learned about teamwork. They learned about um, failure is an option. NASA says failure is not an option, but we've talked about this tonight. Failure is an option, and they need to work as a team. They need to respect each other's opinions, and they need to try things and fail and learn from them. And they've done a great job. So they've learned a great deal from you above and beyond what Civil Air Patrol teaches them. And for that, sir, we would like to give you this trophy. It looks like oh, uh, a hot air balloon or something going up into space. And this is presented to Colonel Joe Kittinger with gratitude as a Civil Air Patrol 2021 National Cadet High Altitude Balloon Challenge Ambassador. Well, so we just you, appreciate Susan. that so much. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. So with that, we just thank everyone that's been involved. We certainly thank General Felka and his leadership team and our volunteer leaders our headquarters team, CAP USAF's team, and all the parents that have helped in here. This has been a truly team project. So we thank you and we'll move back to you, uh, Bob, as you start getting prepared for our national award winners. And we'll wait for that next. That sounds great. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna mute you on my side. Um, I'm gonna leave you guys up. And then Jason and I, I'm gonna reconnect with Jason. We're gonna go over the nominees. And then Colonel Joe, we will come back to you and you can announce the winner. Does that sound like a plan? That's a good plan. All right, sounds good, I'm about to mute you. Okay, so you are now muted. All right. All right, everybody, give me a second here. I am gonna go get myself Jason. All right, Jason, there you are. Let me um, get you back over here. All right. And you got audio on me? I got audio on you. I All think right. you're good. All right. So now, Jason, we, we are we are down to it, my friend. We are down to the Kittinger Cup. Um, what do you think was important when we were selecting the Kittinger Cup winner? So, you know, when, when you look at the... Uh, history of Colonel Joe and, and what he's done for aerospace, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and he's, he was test pilot. Okay. When you're a test pilot, you have to look at every aspect of your aircraft, the team working on it. Um, you have to do everything so well because the performance of the machine is, is unknown. Okay. Executing with excellence. He sent himself up as his own experiment into space to see if humans can survive. Unbelievable. He had to do all the, you know, we, we talk about, you know, sweeping the floor, doing all the different things. He, he had to be involved in everything. He went and he asked for the money, right? And then he did the final reports and uh, he did everything and he executed with excellence um, in, in every aspect of his life. So we were looking, we looked at everything. We went all the way back to the pre-flight submissions. We looked at every single slide. We looked at the number and quality in, uh, of, of the projects that you flew 
in um, in the castle. I know, Bob, you you went through the, the videos um, in, in, with a fine tooth comb. And so we looked at how well were the mission patches done. And guess what? The number one thing we looked at first out of everything was, did you follow the directions? Okay. Right. We started there and then we looked at excellence it, across all the different categories. Is there, is there anything you can add, you know, to, yeah. to what we were looking for? Yeah. You know, the um, one thing I'd like to add, I'm going to bring my mic up just a little bit here. I think I'm a little softer than you. All right. So there we go. Um, so yeah, I, I will say one of the things you just kind of mentioned it earlier, some of the squadrons and the, the winner definitely did this. The nominees all did this, but a lot of the other teams did this as well. They, they, I was amazed at how well they took use of what is a relatively small environment. They packed in a lot of science into a small vial. And one of the things I think it's great about that is if you are somebody and you want to send science to the National Space Station, they're not going to shut off an entire module of the space station for you. You're going to get a tiny little thing for your, for your science experiment to go into. Um, and so that was real world, um, being able to use the most, you know, the best use of that space. Um, so I, I think that that was really great. We did see some squadrons. Um, I know that all of our nominees here, uh, they all did this, our winner, um, they took great use of the space. Um, they had cadets that instead of just having one cadet put in one um, science experiment, we had cadets putting in multiple science experiments per cadet, um, really showing a dedication to the project. And I know that Jason, that that caught your eye, it caught my eye as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, all right, with that, Jason, are you ready to hear the nominees? Hey, I'm ready. All right, here we go. We have four nominees, Jason. We couldn't hold the three. We had to have four. The first nominee is Arizona 210 Sholo Composite. Sholo, you guys have been a rock star amongst this whole project. Um, you know, you, your name has been named several times uh, in this, this project. Uh, we, we've been talking about you on a national level, how well you all did. Uh, we wanna congratulate you for being one of the nominees. Um, Jason, anything specific about uh, Sholo that, that came out to you? You know, uh, they, uh, you know, again, this is the finals, okay? Right. This is, you know, Michael Phelps versus Ryan Lochte, you know, Olympics back in the day. You win by a fingernail, right. okay? So it was very, very difficult in, in, in the last stage here. Uh, I'm glad that, that that we were just the semifinals. We just sent them to the last heat <laughs> That's right. um, and, and let a headquarters deal with it. Uh, but again, just great execution great innovativeness on, um, you know, the, the aspects of science that they, they went ahead and sent out. Yeah. Very good. You know, yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Our next nominee is Johnny Kramer. Again, we've heard that name before. Um, and that was uh, actually one of, that was the person that was the squadron, Jason, that won the hand-drawn patch. I'm seeing yes. that patch again. And again, like you said, that was the, a piece of bread in their hand-drawn patch. Um, and so California 214, fantastic job. Any any comments about um, California yeah, 214? So, um, so it's hard to see this uh, on the video here, but um, you know, when, when you guys get a chance, when we post this, there's some QR codes in here, okay? Mm -hmm. Next level, again, right? So when we were doing the judging, we had to take what was written on this paper, you know, for this category. Um, but, you know, you can go ahead and check that out. And so it gave a little bit more insight. Now, Captain Bob, let me tell you this. Yep. And this is one of those science mysteries that we, we can't explain. And um, one of those QR codes, it gives the reactions of each of the cadets tasting space bread made with yeast sent to space. And earth bread. I'm going to call it earth bread because yep. why not? And for some unknown reason. The kids turn into hulks with all the radiation that they ate from the bread. There you go. We we got our <laughs> next Marvel character uh, coming out of California. <laughs> it's a good place. Uh, I think they're right at, near San Francisco. But space bread tastes saltier than earth bread. Okay. That was... Huh? you know, the, the, the data, um, that came out, uh, from, from the squadron and they asked the person who made the space bread, they didn't use any salt. That's really interesting. 
I'd actually like to see a so, follow up to that. It, it's a mystery um, of science, and there's a lot of mysteries here um, that uh, we're going to have to revisit, hopefully, and, and you know, get to the bottom of. So, is it possible, Jason, that we could send up unsalted potato chips, and they would yeah. come down salted or taste you know, salted? I can't, I can't confirm or deny <laughs> that that uh, might happen, but uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I will tell you that. Um, when you are pressurized in an airplane, yep. okay, and you're going to look this up, I'm going to make up some statistics here, but it, it's something like this. You, your taste is dulled by 30% when you're pressurized. That's okay? interesting. Um, and, and it has to do with something with salty or sour. And so when, when chefs design menus for airplanes, they have to change the flavor profile because it's different than Earth. Oh, very cool. And, and, you know, we might have that same kind of thing happen on the moon where everything tastes like sand. You know, I can um, see, um, you know, I can see, I can see Colonel Joe uh, in the upper corner of my other monitor. And so I want to see, I'm waiting to see if yeah, he's already starting to smile. So, so and they're, they could, everybody's looking at him. They, um, I want, I was going to, I have to ask him if his, uh, if his wife, after he came back down, thought he was a little salty. That's my joke. That's all I've got. That's my best joke of the night. Da -da -da. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go. All right. Well, let's move on. Um, all right. So that's our second nominee. So now our third nominee is a combination um, squadrons here. I thought this was really cool. Now, you know, at first I thought maybe uh, Massachusetts five. Oh, you know what? I said five two times. My apologies. That's a mistake on the slide. It should be Massachusetts five and Massachusetts seven. Um, so I, at first I thought maybe Bridgewater and Goddard were two small squadrons and they went to work together. And it's actually not the case. Um, they're, they're both a halfway decent. I come from a really large squadron, but you know, they're, they're, um, they're both decently sized squadrons, but yet they had a small group in one squadron decided to work with a small group from another squadron. Um, and that type of collaboration I thought was really great. Um, you yeah. know, in science, you have to collaborate. With, with other groups outside of your own team. Um, and so I thought that yeah. was fantastic. Any thoughts you have on- um, Yeah, you know, Patches absolutely. Five and seven? So, you know, um, just like just like this project, um, you know, you're in South Carolina, I'm in Indiana, Susan and Joe are in uh, Florida. Um, you know, we're collaborating right. uh, now across time zones, across continents, right? And so uh, working with uh, other people that might geographically be slightly different than you is great. Also with limited resources, part of the problem, um, the problem statement here was that, you know, we kind of gave one capsule to Massachusetts or, or maybe a few. We didn't have one for everyone. This is aerospace, right? right? So we have very limited capacity um, in, in what we could fly. And, you know, I guess they, they figured, hey, and, you know, whoever, I, I think probably um, five, what, you, you know, if I had it on the list, can't yep. remember, but, you know, somebody was signed up and, and they allowed seven to come in, right? right? Somebody was first and they gave up space uh, for another squadron. Um, you know, it's, it's incredible sharing. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, th these guys, um, when I took it all the slides, uh, first of all, you know, um, just really well organized for the information that they provided. Um, and they went a direction that was a little bit more medical science. Okay. Yep. Um, the slide they have up here was artificial skin, I believe. Um, you know, just, just really cool what you can take 40 grams and do medical science, uh, medical space science. It, it really blew my mind. Very good. All right. Um, let's see our fourth and final nominee and Florida, just giving you a heads up, um, we're gonna be back to you in probably about 30 seconds to a minute. All right, um, all right. so our fourth nominee um, is Delaware 20, North Chesapeake Cadet Squadron. Congratulations for being a nominee. And they did their test, they had several tests, but um, one of their tests was about active dry yeast. What did you like so much about this, Jason? Uh, you know, this, again, was a, a volume of science and, and quality execution. Um, you know, I, I think that they had over 15 different science projects happening inside their capsule. Okay. Yep. Um, just the volume and then the quality. Each slide, um, unfortunately, I, I don't think we have the slides listed here, but 
each slide was just really well uh, executed uh, in, a, in an innovative kind of art, artistic way. Yep. Um, they sent up Advil liquid gels. Um, so it was just the quality and quantity of science that came came through um, in execution. So, you know, I, I know other squadrons might have flown 10 things, right, or, or done 10 projects, but we received three slides. Right. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. You know, it is what it is. They flew 15 and they delivered 15 quality projects to us um, with also quality video explaining everything. That's right. So, again, this is this is uh, you know fingers in your swimming race or you know stretch the neck on the on the track race. It's very tough to judge um, in this top category. Yeah. So congratulations. Really well done. Yeah, absolutely well done. So North Chesapeake Cadet Squadron, congratulations. The other thing I wanted to point out here just to uh, rub it into you, you a little bit, Jason, is you've noticed it says maximum altitude. What does it say, buddy? What does it maximum altitude say? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't read it. 103,058 yeah. feet. Oh, so, man, somebody Bob. didn't think the balloon was going to go over 100,000, oh, and they put a man, wager on it. So me. I'm not, you know what? We got to launch again. <laughs> we got to launch again and get that, get that bet going again. No double or nothing, buddy. I want my quarter. All right, um, Jason, before we go over to Florida, and I see Florida's ready to go, we're going to jump over to them, and, and Colonel Joe is going to give us the, the, the winner here. I know everybody's excited to hear it. Um, two things. One, we are actually on schedule. It's amazing. Uh, number wow. Two, I want to say something, and, and I know she can't talk right now because I have her muted. Um, and and this is, I, I want her to understand and the folks to understand the importance of Susan um, here, right? So they've heard Susan's name. Uh, Colonel Joe is giving Susan a hug right now, <laughs> and well deserved as well. <laughs> um, see that? I can I can watch everybody. I've got eyes everywhere, guys. So uh, <laughs> so. Um, I, what, I have my own comments, but what do you, you know, for those that don't know, Susan is uh, the national coordinator for STEM at National. Um, she may have a different title, but that's what I know her as. Um, and what, what's your thoughts about Susan? I'm, I'm going to follow up yours with mine. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I think it's just, is wow. The energy that Susan has, you know, Bob and I wish that we, we had half of that uh, even today. It's unbelievable. Um, so just incredible there. And then, you know, really her, her heart and her passion is for youth mm -hmm. in aerospace um, and, and creating the, the next um, Colonel Joe's, the next Burt Rutan's, um, you, you know, the next aerospace innovators and, and corporations and really providing a service to humanity um, just is she knows all these people. Uh, it is just incredible. And the reason is to engage educators, youth, myself, you, Bob, and just connecting. She's a connector and connecting all these people to, uh, you know, take aerospace education and inspiration to the next level. Yeah. So thank you, Susan. Couldn't have done it without you for sure. Um, she even put Bob and I together. I wouldn't have known this crazy guy. <laughs> Uh, without Susan. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight what you just said. Um, I have never met anybody and I talk to a lot of people through the different YouTube channels and stuff like that. Um, I have never talked to anybody who knows as many people as Susan knows. Um, she, she's laughing in the background, but um, there, there literally is nobody. I mean, you know, you mentioned a name from some book or something, some obscure reference of somebody. She's like, oh, I had dinner with them yesterday or something. You know, you're like, what do you mean you had dinner with them yesterday? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, you know, you send an email, you know, and uh, she, she's, she's so busy. She's trying to do so much. She responds, she at 3.30. I'm not kidding, folks. She's responding to emails at 3.30 in the morning. So I don't know what all you think you're going to do when you retire from your jobs. <laughs> But, you know, Susan found a passion, um, you know, and she is living her passion and we are all benefiting from her passion. So um, I wanted to give you that word, Jason, and uh, before I jump back over to Florida, because uh, Susan does not like being in the limelight. She, she likes being the helper in the background. Um, but Susan, none of this would have happened if it wasn't for you. Um, so thank you so much for everything. And I'm going to, so Jason, with that, I can't, I can't have all three of us talk at the same time, right, unfortunately. Hey. 
I'll, I'll stay on here. If you bring me back, I'll, I'll appreciate it. But uh, just an honor to work with you, Susan, Colonel Joe, uh, all the, the cadets blew my mind um, with the work that you've done. And, uh, you know, I hope that I can fly in one of your planes one day, maybe <laughs> spaceship, maybe space station, who knows? Uh, I, I'm there with you guys, uh, the innovators of the future. Hey, we just had our first CAP Arizona AEO went up in a SpaceX rocket. So you never there know. You go. You never know. There you go. All right, Jason, I'm actually not going to be coming back to you. So I'm going to be doing okay. the same thing I did with uh, Major General Felka. And I'm going to kick a, I'm going to kick you off. <laughs> so, hey, there you go. Thanks, thanks Jason. Guys. We'll talk See to you ya. later. Bye-bye. All right, fantastic. Let me go ahead and bring, uh, let me leave uh, Jason's meeting so I can clear that up. And let me go ahead and bring back Florida. And let's see here, we're gonna get rid of the screen because we wanna do Skype. And there we go. All right. All right, Florida, can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, fantastic. Um, it was wonderful to see uh, Susan, uh, Colonel Joe kind of give you a good job little hug there. Um, you know, it was nice. I, I, I could, I could still watch you guys in the, in the corner of one of my screens. So that was, that was really nice. All right. So enough with all the talking already, right? So Colonel Joe, I give the floor to you to announce the very first 2021 Colonel Kittinger high altitude balloon challenge winners. Well, before I announce the winner, let me say that this program has been a win-win project from the very beginning. Uh, it, it brought to national attention what the CAP contributes to our nation. And you've motivated young people to look a different direction and to work as a team. It, it's a fantastic lesson that you, you've initiated to this wonderful group of people. And I'm just delighted to be a part of it. But the, the winner... Of, of, of the uh, of the uh, competition. And by the way, there was 139 different squadrons, 1,500 cadets worked together as a team to, to contribute to this project. So it, it's, the winner is the Bridgewater State University Composite Squadron. And congratulations. And? And the Goddard Cadet Squadron, they, they, they collaborated together and it's a, it, it showed teamwork and congratulations to all of you for your contributions that you made to this program. And, and you've got some special And you've got some special guests there with you, don't you? We do. And before we bring them on, I just wanted to say well, I, we did not want to cut off Colonel Kittiger for all. Did you go ahead if you needed to say more? I, I think I said everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we thank you. And so before we bring those young people on, there are four of them, two from each squadron, and they have their uh, adult leaders here. Now, only two of the adult leaders are here, but both squadrons had several adult leaders in their squadrons helping them. So their, their adult leaders were gonna come, are going to come on here. So I'm going to step off the screen and let them walk up and let Colonel Kittinger give the senior cadet uh, the check for $5,000 and the cup. They can do a group cup thing afterwards. But we've asked though each cadet to say a few words about what this program has meant to them. So we're going to call them up and put their adult leaders behind them. And then we have a special guest also is Lieutenant Colonel Gary Dalkey from the Florida Wing. He has been, been very instrumental in helping make this trip to Florida for these cadets from the Massachusetts Wing very special. So he's going to give a guided tour, a personalized gu guided tour. They don't even do guided tours right now during COVID, but they're going to do this at Cape Canaveral wow. and at Kennedy Space Center. So we're going to bring him up to stand with the team for a group a group picture and then let each of the cadets uh, to uh, speak their part. So I'm going to get off the stage and call their names, sir. And I think you're going to give each an autographed book. You have your come up and get me book. So I'll step off and read the names and call them in, please. Okay, so I'm gonna get my list instead of yours. All right, from the Northeast Region, Massachusetts 005, Bridgewater State University Composite Squadron, we have Cadet Colonel Maeve Carrig. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel. <laughs> Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Leah Bajani. Sorry, stop. Sorry, I said one thing. From the Northeast Region, Massachusetts. 
Massachusetts 007 Goddard Cadet Squadron. We have Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Henry O'Brien. And Cadet Tech Sergeant Gage LeFleur. Squadron is Captain Leslie Kniper. <laughs> and from Goddard Cadet Squadron is Lieutenant Colonel Luann Moffy Ewok. And Lieutenant Colonel Gary Dalkey, if you'll come stand beside them too, get a little bit closer. And we want to say a special thanks also to the Wing Commander, Colonel John Flaherty and the Northeast Region Commander, Colonel Everett Hume. So thanks to all of them. And if we've got everyone on the screen and we're sliding close, Colonel Dalkey, if you want to get behind your, uh, Colonel Kittinger. Spot for a quick shot. <laughs> and then we're going to let the cadets now speak and then we'll let them do a group shot with the trophy at the end. So we'll let the adults get one quick shot and then we'll let them step off and our cadets will speak. Thank you, cadets. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Henry O'Brien from the 007 Goddard Cadet Squadron. Um, this was one of many amazing opportunities that CAP has offered me and many other cadets like me, like myself, um, this event taught us many skills such as leadership and teamwork where you can't get that anywhere else. I would also like to thank everyone on the team as well as especially I'd like to thank Colonel Joe Kittinger. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm Cadet Colonel Maeve Carrig from the Bridgewater State University Composite Squadron. In doing this project, we wanted to further our knowledge of aerospace for our future careers as doctors, pilots, and even astronauts. By working together, we were able to use each other's individual strengths to make our project stand out. We want to change the world for the better and set an example for others to follow, and this project, project gave us the perfect opportunity to do just that. Colonel Kittinger is an amazing example of someone who has inspired so many people, and we can all only hope that one day we can aspire to, be all, to do all the things that he has done. Thank you, sir. I am Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Lee Vajevany from the Bridgewater State University Composite Squadron. And I think one of the most important factors that we learned is how valuable teamwork is. We shared ideas that luckily our mentors could keep up with, ranging from sheep eyeballs to tardigrades to artificial skin. And what we were really important about is being accountable for our own actions and our responsibilities. And we always supported one another. Like, for example, Cadet O'Brien donated his urine for <laughs> Colonel Carrick's dipsticks and Cadet Lafleur dyed and cut her hair purple for my project. <laughs> and as well as it sounds, we did grow as leaders. And we were so motivated we were working through this project hours and hours and it all came together and we earned it, and I think everyone else earned it as well. And most importantly, we learned from our failures. So thank you very much. Um, good evening. I am uh, Cadet Tech Sergeant Sage LaFleur from the Goddard 007 Cadet Squadron. Um, I've learned many things from this experience, um, but one of the most valuable lessons that I'd like to share is one that was solidified when talking to Colonel Kittinger this evening. Um, he told us that no one can get anywhere without lots of help and support from their teams. And this is just a lesson that has been like, I've been learning over and over and over again during this experience. Um, like two specific people I want to point, point out is um, Lieutenant Colonel Luann Matthew Oak um, and Captain Leslie Meefer. They The two of them have given us so much time, money, um, space, energy, cookies, um, and love <laughs> to just keep us going, motivated, and winning. So we could not have done this without you two and everyone else that has helped us along, like parents and each other. 
Um, so thank you. Colonel Kittiger, I think you have a presentation to make. I, I do. Uh, I have an honorarium uh, device here to uh, present to the uh, Bridgewater State University and the Composite Squadron. Uh, it's a it's an amount of five thousand dollars that I hope will motivate next year's and the following years to the, to motivate the cadets and the CFP squadrons to uh, compete. And uh, every year I'll contribute five thousand dollars to the winners. So congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. It's an honor. Thank you. Sir. And I have uh, autographed my book, and uh, the first copy goes to uh, Colonel uh, Cardiff. And congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. And the next goes to to you. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Vielman, did I pronounce it right? Um, no, sir, but it's okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, sir. And. The uh, third book, third uh, book goes to uh, Chief Master Sergeant uh, O'Brien. Congratulations. You, and the final book goes to the uh, young lady who dyed her hair, <laughs> Tech Sergeant uh, Lafleur. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'd like to present the cup, the Kittinger Cup, to the winning team. And I hope that it will cherish that because I'm very proud to have it in my name and be a part of this great program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We're going to stand back and let them go behind the front finger with the cup, one big shot at the end, and we'll close this out. You know, while, while you guys are setting it up, I will say, one thing that is just shocking to me, Colonel Joe, and that is the, the, the actual image of, of, of the legend, one of the legends, I know you'll blush when I say it, but one of the legends that got us started in space and the next generation that's standing behind you now, um, you know, one of these folks may be going to Mars. Um, you know, who, who, who behind Colonel Joe? Raise your hand if you want to go to space. <laughs> uh, all four of you so we could have an entire generation uh picture here this is awesome they are our future leaders very much so all right colonel joe do you have anything else you'd like to uh, close us out with well once again this is a win-win situation you know the, the cap does so much for our nation that it is, is unrewarded uh th this program shows what the total teamwork does of the CAP and the aerospace education to make future leaders and the STEM program. So it, it was a win-win program. And Dr. Montgomery, you had a, a great team working for you. And, and Susan uh, Millay is the one that completely responsible for this whole program. So it's teamwork, it's, it's scientific projection, and it, hopefully next year it'll be even better in the years to come because we started off with a great team great objectives and it'll just grow from what we've started with couldn't be couldn't couldn't be better and team did a fantastic job great job to your parents to your commanders to your wing commander because we literally had a phone call and said you know okay here's who we think's gonna win can we get them on an airplane like within 24 hours <laughs> um and, and i i've never seen anything colonel jill that happens in cap in 24 hours <laughs> like that um and and they made it happen um next time i talked to somebody somebody said well they're on the airplane i said you gotta be kidding me <laughs> um that was absolutely fantastic and so congratulations to everybody there um colonel joe the team is from massachusetts Great job. Um, I want to see what you do next year. Now you know what it takes to be a winner. Now everybody else watching this, you know who you got to go for. This is the team that you guys got target on your back now. You guys got to up your game next year. So, so everyone's coming for your trophy. So, all right, Colonel Joe, everybody in Florida, congratulations. Um, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. and I'm going to do some final remarks, and we're going to wrap this up. Thanks again, everybody in Florida. We'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right. Listen, I am dumbstruck. Really, that that image of Colonel Joe with the cadets, you know, around him. Um, you know, you have somebody who was one of the first people to get into space, hundred thousand feet. Um, you know, and then you know he's literally handing you know the trophy um, to our next generation. Um, just absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, it, it's such an honor to be able to, to speak, not with just with Colonel Joe, but to be able to hear the cadets speak. Um, some of you have a, have a good career in public speaking. <laughs> you did a really nice job. Um, all right, with that folks, I just wanna say thank you to everybody. Um, we are hoping that we're gonna put this, this presentation on, um, this uh, project on again next year. So start thinking about it. If you're somebody that's watching this and you didn't have a unit, uh, that was involved in this, but you wanted to check it out, see what it was like, then I want to ask that, uh, you know, hey, talk to your squadrons, start getting your ideas together. Um, be before you know it, we're gonna be looking at, you know, our next, um, our next groups and uh, looking for volunteers. Um, also, if you're somebody, if you would like to help uh, with the production of this, we definitely help with logistics and, and things like that to help try to make this bigger and better. Um, you know, reach out to myself. You can reach out to Susan. You can leave a comment down below. If you're somebody, you're not even involved in Civil Air Patrol. You didn't even know what Civil Air Patrol was until you clicked on this link. I want to, I want to recommend to you that you go, and if you're interested in learning more about what we do, visit GoCivilAirPatrol.com. We do a little bit of everything. We have emergency services. We are, I think we do about 90% of the, the um, inland search and rescue for the Air Force missions. A lot of folks don't know that. Um, we have a very large cadet program. Um, you saw a part of that tonight. And we have a very large aerospace education program. Uh, that aerospace education program I wanna point out is not just for CAP members. It's for teachers as well. So if you are a teacher um, and you are interested in, in seeing what type of STEM kits and lessons that we can help you with, please reach out. You can visit GoCivilAirPatrol.com. You can leave a message down in the comments below and we can get you that information. We'd love to have you.